All right, what's going on today? I want to talk about a brief overview of the differences between BSD and Linux. Um, I've been a Linux user for a long time, and I'm just now starting to get really deep into BSD, and I kind of wanted to share some of my experiences and some of the data behind why I made this switch on some of my servers. So first, I do want to give, again, a little bit more of a background on me, on my bias. Um, I've been using Linux for about 10 years, while I've only been using BSD for about one year at this point, and that's mainly through TrueNAS and now FreeBSD. Uh, where my Linux has mainly been Debian uh, and its derivatives, but also a little bit in Red Hat, Arch, and SUSE. And further breaking down my bias, I also do run a, um, a high-level Linux overview I call the Linux Masterclass on uh, my blog website. So that's going to kind of give a lot of um, new uh, users to Linux an introduction and kind of explain to them the processes, the hows, and the why. So that's definitely going to probably skew me a little bit towards Linux. But now that we've got that out of the way, um, let's talk about the differences between the two operating systems. So first, um, just a primer, um, I'm using Alma Linux, or uh, pretty much Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 for this, and then for BSD, I'm using FreeBSD, specifically FreeBSD 12, um, but in the package comparison, I'll be looking at FreeBSD 13, as that's the most uh, current distribution of, it, or of the operating system. So getting right down into the numbers, you're gonna see RAM usage is about three times higher, um, and these servers are both running about exclusively Nginx, you're going to see about 238 megabytes of RAM utilization on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, where you're going to see on FreeBSD 12, it's about 84 megabytes. So that is a magnitude of difference for um, a microservice, really. Um, and that's going to by far go away when you start looking at adding a LAMP stack or adding Docker or adding any kind of services on top of that, right? But um, just running one service, you're going to see a very large difference, about 150 megabyte delta in RAM usage here. And then further following that trend, you're gonna see Red Hat Enterprise Linux is running, I believe, 32 processes here, where FreeBSD is running 21. So that's gonna increase um, CPU utilization, it's gonna increase RAM utilization, and um, that's why um, another reason why you might wanna look at FreeBSD. Um, looking further at a much higher level here, you're gonna see the packages and the distribution. So this is looking at um, you know, YUM and DNF for Red Hat, and it's going to be looking at uh, PKG for FreeBSD. So while it looks like a landslide victory for FreeBSD, um, it's actually not quite that simple. We can break it down, but you're gonna see about 30,000 in the main uh, repository for FreeBSD, where you're gonna see about 9,000 in the main repository for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, primarily the app stream. Um, and then lastly, again, from a high level, you're gonna see popularity in search trends. So this is from Google Trends data. You're gonna see about three times, a little over three times actually, higher popularity with uh, Red Hat versus um, FreeBSD. So uh, it's about 72 versus 18 percent. Then breaking down RAM utilization. So again, these are both running pretty much exclusively Nginx, HTOP, sudo, and vim. Um, they also both have SSH um, enabled. And they're both running either Firewall D or IPFW on FreeBSD. So looking at the RAM utilization a little bit more, these are the top RAM utilizing applications. So you're going to see Firewall D or Firewall Daemon, SSSD or System Security Services Daemon, Tuned, which is a performance application, and then Pullkit D, more of a process elevation handling daemon. So these are the top four users, and you're going to see Nginx doesn't even show up in this, Bash isn't showing up in this, HTOP isn't showing up in this. So even though those are applications are running, you're going to see that these are going to be utilizing much more RAM, which is going to kind of give you that three times higher RAM usage. Uh, where if you look at FreeBSD, you're going to see Nginx, the primary application on the server, is right on top, uh, followed by SSHD and SendMail and the C shell. So these applications are just not using as much RAM. Then looking at the process here, um, again, you're going to see 32 versus 21. One thing I would like to say here is these are both running on virtual machines um, with two threads or one core and two threads on my desktop. They are running at the same time. They were both given two gigabytes of memory and about uh, 12 gigabytes of storage. So one thing I do want to point here um, is the uptime. So Red Hat is only at 45 minutes, where FreeBSD has been running for about eight hours and 20 minutes. So just with systems running, you're going to see a little bit of memory leak. You're going to see a little bit of uh, you know applications run. And as uptime increases, you're going to see a slight increase in RAM. So this is even a better um, situation for Red Hat here, uh, which makes its 238 versus 84 megabytes of RAM, or 81, I'm sorry, uh, look much worse. Um, and that's going to, again, come from the tasks. So you're going to see 32 tasks with 20 threads running, or with one thread running, excuse me. 
um, versus the 21 tasks on FreeBSD with two threads running. So that again is just going to increase um, server utilization. And in the you know cloud world, that's very important statistics, right? So let's break down packages. Um, so again, FreeBSD had 30,000 in the PKG, where um, Red Hat had 9,000 in uh, Yelm and DNF through AppStream. But it's not quite that simple. So both of these are going to have manual compilation. So if you want to, you know, pull some code from GitHub and compile it down to source uh, from source, you're welcome to. But Red Hat has a few additional options here. So not only is there Apple or extra packages for enterprise Linux, which are also going to see Flatpak, Snap, and App Image, which are um, kind of distro independent on Linux, and it's going to give you a lot of applications. So Flatpak is going to be more for your server, and Snap is going to be a bit more for your um, uh, clients. But with that, you're going to see, you know, applications like your, your Discords, um, your Zooms, um, and, you know, more client-facing applications that might just for some reason not be in the main uh, repository. So while it looks like FreeBSD is by far and away the winner here with over three times the packages, um, it actually ends up being uh, much more in the favor of Red Hat here, especially from a desktop user. And continuing on with packages, I just kind of wanted to give a quick eight packages um, that I think are important for you know developers and just clients as well. So you're going to see Zoom and Steam are two that are available on Red Hat where they are not available on FreeBSD. So again these are both kind of treated like second-rate citizens when it comes down to their um, support, but you're going to see better support from Red Hat, not to mention that any game running on Steam um, is actually doing a great job right now because um, of what Steam's been up to where FreeBSD, those are not going to compile down nearly as nicely, right? So it's going to take a lot more effort. You'll probably have to use Wine, um, and you're just not going to have as good of an experience. Um, but looking at some other tools, especially like developer tools and system administrator tools, such as Firefox, Nginx, Vim, FileZilla, and VS Code, all of those are on both distributions. You're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see your Apaches, um, your Pythons, your Rubies. Um, all of those are going to be on pretty much both distributions because these are by system administrators and developers for system administrators and developers. So there's just going to be a much um, greater amount of packages that are for system administrators and developers. I do think it's important to talk about you know your Microsoft Offices and your Adobe suites though. Um, those are missing from both, right? So um, there's talks of uh, Microsoft Office coming to Linux. Um, but currently, uh, more of those client-facing applications, um, behind paywalls especially, are not going to be present on either um, operating systems. And then just from another high level, um, looking at Google Trends here, we can kind of see the popularity over the past five years. So um, FreeBSD is consistently a much less popular um, query on Google. Um, versus Red Hat, and then to give you a bit more, um, we can look at Ubuntu 20.04, Windows Server 2019, uh, FreeBSD 13, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Um, and their query results, and this is over the past year, um, these are the most current releases of these operating systems, um, stable-wise. And you're going to see, by far and away, Ubuntu is going to be the most popular, followed by Windows Server, and Red Hat and FreeBSD are kind of in relative obscurity here, especially FreeBSD. So. While comparing these, they may look pretty similar. Um, in the grand scheme of operating systems, they are not the most popular. Um, another important thing I think to look at between uh, Linux and FreeBSD is going to be the echo command. So they're both free and open source software, but when it actually comes to opening that software and looking at the source code, you're going to see a big difference here. So Red Hat uses the GNU core utils. Um, echo command, which is going to be 257 lines of code with about 7,000 characters, where FreeBSD is going to be about 3,300 characters um, and 107 lines. So in terms of text legibility, um, when it comes to looking at the source code, I think FreeBSD does a much better job often. Um, that usually comes down to um, it's going to be a much tighter release, right? The, um, the developers working on FreeBSD are not working on as many projects and distributions as Linux developers. And looking at the use cases of Linux, you're going to see um, by far and away the most popular is going to be servers. Um, a very strong majority of servers, especially web servers in this world, are running on Linux. So that's going to be the primary use case you're going to see, especially when you're working on the terminal. And um, then kind of building off of that, you're going to see supercomputers. So supercomputers, the top 500 supercomputers in the world, are all running Linux. 
So that just comes down to, you know, they've got great compatibility, they've got a great code base, they've got a great user base, and a great community. So that's going to really help supercomputers choose Linux over Windows Server or FreeBSD or any other alternative. Um, and then the other popular place you're going to see Linux is um, in Android and Android derivatives. So your, you know, your Android uh, OS for your smartphone, but also in your Chromebooks and your smart TVs. Um, these are primarily all Google initiatives. Um, who's been a, a really big proponent of Linux and probably the first time most people have heard of Linux. Um, and you can talk about how open source or not they are, right? But um, they are used and powered by Linux. And then lastly, you're going to see IoT, so your Internet of Things devices, you know, your smart fridges, uh, your smart watches, um, your doorbells, those kind of devices, right? And especially routers. Um, so a lot of those are running like primarily versions of Alpine, Gen 2, much less popular Linux distributions, but it's still a, a very large use case for Linux. Looking at FreeBSD, you're going to see a lot of similar use cases, right? Um, servers, again, is a very strong um, primary use case for BSD, and then building off of that, networking appliances. So PFSense, Citrix, Bluecoat, um, a lot of these things that have to have rock solid uptimes, uh, FreeBSD does a great job of doing. So that's where you're going to see BSD a lot in the real world, um, especially from, again, the bare metal at the terminal application, right? And then you're going to see some consumer devices as well. So I think the big ones here are Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS. So with um, OS X being a derivative of um, Next OS, which is a derivative of BSD, um, that's where you're going to see a lot of BSD devices. Um, you can still see that when you pull up your terminal um, in a Mac device. Um, they're all running BSD, and um, that's probably the biggest user, right? And then lastly, looking more like kind of the um, consumer applications, you're going to see PlayStation. So that's going to be PlayStation 3, your 4, your Vita, and I believe the 5, but um, I actually don't know about that one. It's released a couple of years ago that PlayStation builds off of BSD, and they have a lot of good reasons for doing that. Um, primarily a big one is going to be the use case of um, the Berkeley Software Distribution License versus the GNU license. So that's going to give them a lot more control of how they distribute their code. So looking at BSD and Linux, um, they're two very different operating systems that have you know similar shells. Um, they're both based off Unix, um, you know, with GNU slash Linux and BSD, um, but they have stark differences. So if you're a client user, if you're using a desktop, you're most likely going to want to steer more towards Linux just for the better software compatibility. Um, and software support and user community where if you have a specific server or application that you really need to have be the most performant and stable, BSD might be a much better option. Um, of course, there's a lot more reasons to consider these operating systems, but um, I think those are a few good things and a good primer to give you the difference between BSD and Linux.